Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I have braces. Yeah, cause glasses weren't enough. Yeah, glasses, braces, now I need his red hair to complete the trifecta of abstinence. My name is Mike Lester, so M. Lester. <laughs> Molester. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. That nickname, it didn't really bother me when I was a little kid. Because I'm a little kid. What am I going to molest? <laughs> And I thought that nickname would bother me when I grew up, but I haven't aged. I still look like a molestee. Forget public transportation. When you look like me, you can just take any school bus. Yeah, I'm with Billy. With Billy, I got a propeller hat and a yo-yo. I'm a miner. That's how I get back at the man. Riding around on Uncle Sam's dime. Yeah, take that, NSA. <laughs> Bus driver, can we stop at Chipotle? I'm hungover and need learning fuel. What do you mean a sixth grader can't be hungover? We're in Northeast. <laughs> Half the kids on this bus are hungover right now. Oh, I gotta get off the bus? I'm not getting off this bus till Ethan gives me my Game Boy back. That's right, Ethan, I'm calling you out. Your sister's a whore. Give me my Game Boy back before I make you an uncle, bro. <laughs> Christmas is coming, God. Thank goodness. Thank goodness, I had a weird Christmas. I asked for one thing. I asked for mittens. What does my mom get me? Black fingerless gloves. Yeah, because apparently I'm an emo kid from Tucson, Arizona. What am I gonna use black fingerless gloves for in this climate? She's like, oh, it'll help your dexterity when you're driving. Oh yeah, and I can drive and watch my fingers freeze and fall off. Thanks, mom. I hope you're ready to feed me, Mom. I hope you're ready to feed me again once I lose my hands because of these Hot Topic clearance clubs. <laughs> She's like, oh, you can play piano in those clubs. Where am I gonna play piano in Igloo? Oh, <laughs> well, Marilyn Manson, age 12, tickling the ivories and chanting the Eskimos with my terrible rendition of Chopsticks. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is it is a terrible present. Yeah. So I'm trying to get across. When I'm not doing this, I work at Perkins. <laughs> That's the appropriate response. <laughs> Stunned silence. <laughs> I am their chief dish ambassador. <laughs> or dishwasher, whatever you want to call it. It's great though, because when it's slow, they'll let me bust tables which is fantastic, because then I can hear all the customers whispering to each other, why are they making that 10-year-old bus tables? <laughs> and it doesn't help when I walk up and whisper, help me. <laughs> I miss my mom. I just want to play kickball. <laughs> Call an Amber Alert. I've learned a lot of things at Perkins. I've learned this, senior citizens, you waste a lot of food. Yeah, you're supposed to be the greatest generation. What, you can defeat Hitler, but you can't defeat a waffle? It's three bites. We're getting sides of oatmeal just to look at them. And senior citizens are so cute too when they tip. They're like, this is a buffalo nickel. I know! 
and I don't want it. I also don't want your expired bus pass. Are those bread bags on your feet? Where are your shoes, man? Where are your shoes? You got one decision when you come into Perkins, people. That's table or booth. <laughs> Table or booth, and it's always a fucking battle. <laughs> it's not a final Jeopardy question. You shouldn't have to phone a friend. You're fat, so sit at a table. <laughs> Easy access, in and out. Don't sit at a booth if it's gonna take me and three cooks to get you out of there. <laughs> fall behind on our omelet quota. <laughs> In the indecisiveness, it doesn't stop there. No, 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 no. Sometimes people ask to switch tables for the most asinine reasons. Like one day, out the blue, this lady stopped me. This lady stopped me, and she said to me, Excuse me, son. Is there any way I could switch tables? It's a little drafty in here. I wanted to tell this lady... I wanted to tell her, ma'am, it is July. <laughs> you are sitting in the atrium, which is the warmest part of the dining room. You've already had me turn the thermostat up four times. I've lost two parties to heat stroke. Your fork is melting. I can't move your table in 1931. That draft you're feeling is your ancestors trying to pull you into the great beyond. <laughs> Because you are 97 and a ghost in the making. Yeah, she shut right the hell up. <laughs> I went on a date last week. I met the girl at Applebee's in Shakopee. <laughs> this set the tone for me. <laughs> it was a disaster. <laughs> Halfway through the date, this girl says to me, very, very casually, she, she says to me, Oh, by the way, I occasionally do cocaine. <laughs> Guys, first date, bombshell. And this coke thing, it just led to an onslaught of nervous questions from me, like, where do you get coke and Shakopee? <laughs> Valley Fair? Have you ever been high on coke at Valley Fair? Is this on your eHarmony profile? How many people have you murdered? Do you hang out with Shia LaBeouf? What successful cokehead chooses Applebee's for a first date? Anyone celebrating any birthdays? Any birthdays? Oh, happy birthday. It's your birthday. That's it. Uh, I had a lot of weird birthdays growing up. When I was eight years old, my birthday party was G.I. Joe themed. So instead of a clown, my dad hired a disabled Vietnam vet. Yeah, he didn't do many tricks. Kind of just passed out six times. Shot my dog, Charlie. And set a trap for my friend Kip Song. <laughs> That's gonna do it for me, guys. <laughs> I always love to end on a high note. <laughs>